After six years of hard work and meticulous planning from the young team of Emirati scientists and engineers here at the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center, and this is the moment they've been gearing up for as the Hope probe launches and sets off on a seven month journey to Mars, the first interplanetary mission of the Arab world, and a historic and hair raising moment for all those involved. Ten, five, block. Coaster emotions really from being excited and happy and grateful for this opportunity to being very nervous and terrified. Uh, but above all, we're very there's one emotion that takes over, and that's hope. We are trying to be conservative, yet we cannot contain the happiness we have. It's been six years in the making, so we're still uh, past the first uh, stage of the launch. We're for the second stage, which is the critical part. The successful launch brought short-lived relief as the team prepared for the next series of make-or-break moments, starting with the spacecraft's separation from the rocket as it hurtled 34,000 kilometers an hour towards Mars. Five minutes after separation, we will be deploying the solar arrays. Uh, around 15 to 30 minutes after separation, we'll be acquiring our first signal, and then we will be commissioning our reaction control thrusters so that we detumble the spacecraft and capture the rays. Every mission objective on launch night was a success. We had the launch taking place and uh, the, the, the separation of the spacecraft uh, from the launch vehicle. That took place about one hour after the launch. And just uh, right after that, by about um, 20 minutes, we, we, we managed to receive the first signal from the spacecraft. Though locally led, the Emirates Mars mission wouldn't have been possible without a commitment to international collaboration. Instead of building all the facilities from A to Z, we utilized and rented facilities that are available around the world. Instead of building our own deep space network, we're utilizing NASA's deep space network. We connected it to our operations room in, in Dubai. We bought services from MHI, a Japanese company that launches uh, spacecrafts. So it's very international. And the reason why we succeeded is because of the international collaboration. But this was a mission with its fair share of challenges. We anticipate and think about things that we might face when it comes to risk and when it has to do with schedule and so on. COVID-19 was not one of them for sure. Starting with, had to ship this spacecraft earlier to Japan, uh, about a month earlier than the scheduled uh, date. That on its own was a big challenge that the team was able to overcome. Ultimately, the aim of the mission is to collect data that will be shared freely with everyone. And for these scientists, that's the most exciting part of all. Science isn't something that's owned by um, any one nation. And that's the beauty of it. It's something that benefits all of us. Now the fun part starts with the science and that's starting to collect scientific data, verifying and validating the, the, the data processing that we've done on them so that we can release um, our data sets to the public and to scientists around the world to work, uh, to work on and utilize in their research areas. And this also um, instigates the research of the um, science team to kick off and start. Um, and we truly hope that we do find a scientific discovery by the end of 2021 with the data that's gathered. Whatever discoveries Mars may have in store for them, this mission has already given the team here immense practical knowledge and the hope that reaching the Red Planet is within their grasp.